Good morning, everybody. Welcome to ShallowRelics.com's YouTube page, the page that you guys have helped uh, really influence a lot of new uh, collectors. You have shared these videos, and I'm thankful for each one of you that have taken the time to watch them, to share them. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something that's really pretty. It's made right before the Civil War, but man, it's got more character than a Tom Clancy novel. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a pre-Civil War militia sword. Uh, before the Civil War broke out, when the war broke out, they just didn't automatically have, uh, poof, they made all of these regiments. A lot of them were pre-war uh, National Guard militia type regiments. And some of those regiments, they had a lot of money. And those guys, because they had a lot of money, had a lot of really cool stuff to wear on their uniforms. One of the most uh, well-to-do states in the uh, pre-Civil War time frame was South Carolina. They had a crap pile of money. And most of them lost it during the war, but uh, before the war, they had some really pretty stuff. When you look at that pre-war uh, pieces, they're so finely crafted. And when you've got a state seal like South Carolina's, you got a lot to work with because this is their state seal, Palmetto Tree. Uh, down at the bottom, 1776, because they were proud to have been one of the uh, first colonies, the first states that formed this country. And they kept that 1776 on about everything because uh, if it hadn't been for South Carolina, there probably wouldn't have been a uh, United States of America. So uh, about 1850 or so, the uh, a lot of the real fine crafted pieces were made up north. One of those companies that supplied those southern states with that really neat, really well-made stuff was Horsemen. Horsemen uh, sold swords, they sold uniforms, they sold buttons, they sold buckles. If it had to do with something military, they'd sell it to you. And they, a lot of times, assembled pieces. If you notice, this sword, uh, beautiful sword. It's got the full length blade, 31 and a quarter inches, uh, fire blue and gold on the sides of the blade to bring out that detail like this. Just boom, it pops at you. It's gorgeous. But the blade actually is something that a uh, company that we hadn't talked about, I don't think, but we should have because they were a very important company before the war and during the war that supplied blades they were in Soligen, Germany, Soligen, Prussia. Uh, it's Gebruder Weisberg. And Gebruder is a German word that translates in English as brothers. So it's the Weisberg brothers in Soligen, uh, Prussia, Soligen, Germany. They, the Weisberg family, man, those cats been making swords uh, forever. They say 1400 or earlier. They, in uh, 1787, there were three of the brothers. There was Wilhelm, there was Peter, and there was Johann Ludwig, Ludwig Weisberg. Weisberg brothers, Gerbruder Weisberg. And they made a lot of swords for the American market. One of their, their main design that or trademark that they'll stamp on these blades is this. It's that king's head with a uh, crown up on top. That's the one that they use more often. There does show up, there's a rooster that will show up on some of the cavalry savers. You don't see it a lot, and I don't even know why they used it, but it was kind of a neat thing that shows up on some of the cavalry savers. That was their trademark as well. You've got the king's head. They made really, really nice things, as you can see with this, because uh, they, they were the cat's meow. Uh, hmm. Hadn't used that phrase in a while. Uh, but they made this blade. It would have been brought over to Philadelphia. Uh, horsemen would have assembled the sword. And man, what a sword he is, they assembled. It's got the brass guard. It's got the big clamshell design like this with the palmetto tree, the 1776. The It's got a small, there's details on this sword that's easy to miss when you look at it closely. The quillion of the sword is this. It's an eagle head. Isn't that neat? Uh, the grip panels, they use a single slab on each side of Mother of Pearl. So it has that flash. And when you see the flash of that Mother of Pearl with the blue and gold blade, wow, I like that. 
Up at the top, what brings it all together? We've talked about it a hundred times, the pommel cap. And the pommel cap on this one is made like Lady Liberty. And Lady Liberty's got that big helmet on and she, she's proud, tall, standing there, bringing everything together. Thank you, Lady Liberty. I sure do like you. The scabbard, scabbard on these is important because horsemen, uh, their model for this sword is 425 on the back of the scabbard. Check it out, 425 and the horseman mark. That lets you know that it's the right scabbard for this sword. Uh, the scabbard's completely made of brass. It's got the two little rings like that for hanging off of a sword belt. Also, it has this. It has the stud up at the top so the soldier could wear it on an over-the-shoulder sling should he decide to. Uh, there's also a frog belt, uh, a frog, which is just basically a leather attachment to your belt that it could have hung out of as well. So you've got three options for hanging this sword off the side of the soldier. This one is smoking. I just got it in. I pictured, put it on the website and I was like, Ooh, I won't talk about that one cause it's pretty. And I'm like an old crow. I like the pretty shiny things. Uh, you can go on to shilohrelics.com. You can see this sword as of the time of this video. You can buy this sword. You can call it yours. You can uh, show your friends. You can play them as video and say, I think he's right. I think that's a wonderful sword that I need to have on my wall. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everything is heading your direction. Uh, there are... <laughs> I've tried to think about what to say this after this this part of the segment. Uh, I watched the Olympics last night. Haven't watched many of them because most of them folks I don't care about. But there's a young lady that I admire that has has had a really hard time. And her name, I, you know it already, is Simone Biles. And that young lady is uh, a strong young lady. She is somebody that uh, is strong enough that she can admit when she needs help. And that's what a lot of folks need. They just can't admit it. And, and uh, she has struggled with some mental health issues caused by some trauma. And I think everybody's had some trauma. Hell, I don't know nobody that ain't had no trauma. Uh, tra trauma means you're alive these days. But she uh, has, has reached out, has gotten, has attempted to get help. And I know there's been times in my life where I just didn't know if I could hang on anymore. And I reached out, uh, and I've been fortunate enough to have friends and family and uh, got a therapist. And it has helped me. It has helped me to move forward because, uh, hell, sometimes it's hard to get, get that motivation to keep going and to keep struggling. But I, I, I say that because I watched that young lady last night, and she had the weight of the world on her. And you could just tell by the look in her eyes, it's like, I'm going to fight through this because I'm a fighter and I admire that in somebody. And not only did she uh, fight through it and complete her routine, she got a bronze medal for it. And I wouldn't have cared if she'd have fell off that boom. Just having the guts and the nerve and the strength to get up there in front of all those people that had said that horrible stuff about her and had given her crap because she's struggling she proved them wrong. She got up there and I am so thankful for her and I'm so wish her only the best. And I'm so thankful that she is being a positive role model to show that if you're struggling, don't ask, don't, don't hesitate to ask for help because everybody needs help. Most people just won't admit it. So if you need help, don't hesitate to ask for it. There's a lot of folks out there that love and care about folks. Hell, most, there's a lot of them and I'm thankful for them. And I hope that you guys are well. If you're not, ask for help. If you are, be that help that somebody else needs because we all could use a little bit more of it. I hope you guys are well. I hope it is the best day that you have ever had in your whole life. And remember, tell those that you love that you love them because if you don't, they might not know it. I'll catch you later.